Uh, no, jump back in for a second. There we go. Um, oh, shit. Whoops. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, I've got a few things to uh, show you, give you a little tour of some things I've done off camera since the last episode. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to gear up for making our modular engines, uh, the second input for phase three and do some prep work for, um, the, the third item, which is the something adaptable control unit thingamadoodles. Um, all right. So I have spent a lot of time, I mean, hours and hours <laughs> off camera designing a heavy modular frame production line and oh my god you guys it's unbelievable the amount of shit <laughs> that you've got to put together to just make two only two <laughs> heavy modular frames per minute it's just nuts um but i finally got all the blueprints built and figured out pretty much figured out you know where i'm going to build them and how i'm going to arrange them um and that's something that we will be doing um, in, you know, very soon here. Um, heavy modular frames are used a lot um, in, in addition to the fact that we need them to make these adaptable control units for the space elevator. We need them for a lot of other things, too. Uh, trains use them. Trucks use them. Buildings use them. And um, so, you know, they're one of those items that we just need to be making and automating. Um, but it's just it's a let me put it to you this way. OK, you see that building over there? with all of our steel production in it, the building that we need to make to just make two heavy modular frames is larger than that building. It's got a larger footprint. I, I kid you not. It's like crazy. Um, just to make two. <laughs> no, I can't. I keep saying that, but it's just like blows my mind. Um, it seems like something's a little imbalanced there or something. I don't know. Um, which, which actually does bring something up. I, I did watch uh, Snut's latest video a few, a couple of days ago that he put out about uh, 1.0. Uh, where he goes through and he talks about, you know, what's, you know, what, what they are changing in 1.0. And they're changing so much that affects this factory and my world that I'm probably going to have to start over when 1.0 comes out. Um, it, it, it's just a lot of stuff, it, you know, that they're, that's going to change in 1.0 would to just totally screw this place up. Um, mostly in regards to... Uh, either removing or moving nodes. Uh, for example, our Caterium node that we have over there that we're currently using to make Caterium, that's going to disappear. They're taking that out completely. It's not even going to be there anymore, you know. Um, and there there were at least three or four other, you know, all of our quartz nodes that we're, that we are pulling the quartz from up in the northern forest, that's, they're, they're removing those. They're gone. Um... They're removing the sulfur nodes. They're removing or changing some of the coal and the iron nodes that were tapped into. So, yeah, I think I think we just need to be prepared for, uh, you know, for for a start over when 1.0 comes out. Um, the other the other thing they said too is that if you don't start over when 1.0 comes out, you'll miss some of the the story stuff. Uh, and I don't want to miss out on that. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what all the story is behind this game. So, yeah, uh, with that in mind, I, I, I think we'll just keep going. You know, we'll get as far as we can. I mean, they still haven't given us a date when one was going to drop. So it could be in a month from now or it could be in six months from now. Who knows? So we'll just keep going as if that's not going to happen. But once, you know, once it does happen, you know, however far we get, that's as far as we get. And I believe we'll start over. Um, that kind of sucks in some ways and in other ways it doesn't. But, you know, it is what it is when it, when it, a, a release version, you know, or one a game, I should say, comes out of early access. That's to be expected. And so, you know, we'll we'll do it. Okay, so anyway, enough on that. Let's see. I've got a few things I want to show you, and we're going to go ahead and go into fly mode for that. Um, so the first thing is, as you can see here, I have created a nice little shed for our storage facility, for our central storage facility. 
Um, it's nothing real super fancy, but it's basically, you know, just a shed that, uh, you know, is accentuated by the beams and, you know, has some a little bit of the black and green color and some windows there. And, uh, yeah, so we, we built this and now our storage is covered and all of the concrete inside uh, underneath the building is coated. I really like the way that makes things look. It's just absolutely amazing. Uh, so realistic. Um, looking so um, that's pretty much all I have to tell you about that that building um, but I think it looks really nice so uh, I also covered our little conveyor bridge here uh, with these windows and with some glass uh, ceilings and yeah so I think that looks good too all right let's see what else I have also put in substations um, at various points and so basically this switch now um, separates our our power production grid our main one in other words all of these all these coal generators from everything else essentially um, so uh, yep I, I set that up there and then I also have I also have another substation uh, down here yeah on this end that's um, you know, also, se you know, separating this grid from everything else. That's just kind of the other side of it. And then um, this power grid here is just all part of this. I don't have this separated off by itself. And then up at the old uh, or original factory, I did a little bit of rearranging up there, too. Uh, in fact, let's just go over there and I'll show it to you. All right, so what I did was I removed all the uh, battery storage. I, I had originally placed them up here several episodes ago, and I put them down here. This, it's the same quantity, so it's it's 900 megawatts of power. And then I uh, put in a substation here that separates this power grid um, from everything uh, going on up here. And then I also put in a switch in here that separates the main power grid which i'm naming i named the west grid to the rocky desert grid which is what i'm calling this grid um now everything's all connected together and running together but um you know they they can now be um separated from one another uh if we need to do that to troubleshoot power and stuff like that um all of uh, all of these street lights are now drawing power from the main grid um and no longer from this grid up here so this grid up here is capable of supporting um, everything we have going on over here, uh, and then even with a little bit of power left over, and especially now that I re removed the street lights from it. So it's essentially, you know, um, self-sufficient, or and, and can operate independently of the main power grid. If it, you know, if it, if it, like for example, let's say I needed to bring the main grid down to do something. <laughs> um, I, we could still keep this one, you know, going up and running. And the reason we want to separate them is because this grid cannot support everything we got going on over there, right? So what we would need to do is basically sh uh, disconnect them so that this grid could at least continue running things up here. So that's kind of the idea behind that. I also did wire it in such a way that the biomass burners are also part of the power production grid and they are not connected directly to... Um, all of the machines just you know kind of the way that I ran the cabling and so forth okay so we got that done and I think I think that's pretty much all I have to update you on on stuff that I've done off camera as far as our main save goes like I said I've been working for hours and hours um, on getting that uh, heavy modular frame set up uh, production set up and it, I mean it's going to take me a couple of episodes probably just to put the damn thing together it's so involved we'll see, we'll see how that goes maybe not it just depends on how how well things come together and you know editing and that sort of thing um i still have plenty of of room left over on on the power grid too once i do hook that up so we don't have to worry about power yet but one when when the time comes for us to increase our power um we're gonna we're going to go oil because why not? I mean, we've got plenty of oil here. And, um, oh, that's another thing, too, I remember from Snut's video is that right now uh, a fuel generator only produces 150 megawatts, which is only, you know, twice as much as the coal generators. 
Um, but they're going to increase that to 250 megawatts in 1.0, which I think is more appropriate considering it's you know such a larger machine uh, and it's supposed to be you know the next tier. Okay, so um, I finished making all of my uh, well not making I've been making them all along, but I finished shipping down all of the smart plating that we're going to need for the modular engines and I just have that kind of sitting in this storage container for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a full uh, semi-automated uh, production for the modular engines and then we're going to use a truck just to haul the parts down there in a truck station. Um, it's going to take me quite a bit longer to to be able to produce the 100 adaptive control units because they n n need heavy modular frames and they need computers. And I'm probably also going to set up a permanent computer production line too because computers are also used for a lot of things later on down the road. Uh, so it's going to be a little while before that's going to be <clears throat> you know, ready for production. And uh, so my plan for that is to use a train to set up a, a, our, our very first train line um, and use the rail system to deliver those down to the space elevator and then that's just the start of what will, you know, eventually become a much larger train network, uh, but always with the ability to run everything down to the space elevator. Now, I know I could move the space elevator down here, but I want to just leave it where it is because, um, you know, that way we have a reason to go to go back there more often. And um, it just I don't know. I want to leave it there. So there you go. <laughs> uh, OK, so we got a lot to do here. Um, let's go ahead and get started then with. Uh, setting up this production line for these modular engines. So the first thing we're going to actually do is um, let's let's go ahead and build our first truck. Now I did build this, of course, off camera to test it, um, but I haven't done that with you guys. So let's get the stuff we need to get that going. First thing is we do have some heavy heavy modular frames, you know, that I just kind of have on standby here for stuff because we need it to build things. Uh, we're going to need, let's see, we're going to need five of those. Uh, so let's just split this into five. And we'll put these back in there. And let's see, what else do we need? Uh, we're going to need uh, 15 motors and 10 circuit boards. I also have a few extra circuit boards in here. Split those. And then it said 15 motors. Let's just actually grab a whole stack of those because we're going to need more anyways. In fact, for that matter, we're going to need more of the other things too. So let's just grab a stack of all of these. So we'll have one stack of circuit boards and one stack of heavy modular frames. Very good. Okay, so I want to... Uh, um, yeah, yeah, we need to get some fuel for this too, but I, I have a plan for that as well. All right, let's go ahead and build this. And there we go. So this is the truck of the game. The largest wheeled transporter. <coughs> um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get some fuel for it. So let's just go over here and grab some packaged fuel. But I will actually hook this packaged fuel up to the truck station once we get it set up. And again, this is all temporary, too. There's something in this game. Well, I mean, people can play the game however the hell they want, obviously, but it seems to me like there are some things in the game that you just want temporary setups for and then other things you want permanent, you know, production lines for. So, yeah, let's put the fuel in there. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to kind of get it, uh, a feel for turning radius and that sort of thing because that'll kind of um, dictate where we should set things up so the path is you know relatively smooth so let's come back around this way oh my goodness <laughs> it's spinning out okay so the truck will It'll be turning this way, except for it'll, of course, be coming from the other direction. It's a little bit tight. I know I have a very narrow road, but I can't 
I can't widen this road because it won't fit through the terrain, you know, um, over yonder. So for this particular road, we're just going to have to deal with it. Um, I am tentatively planning on making larger roads later on too, but yeah, so much to do. Okay, so anyway, the truck's going to come down here and then it'll probably, you know, come all the way down to here and then it's going to need to turn around. So, um, so it needs at least that much of a turning radius uh, to, to make a nice smooth turn. Okay, so knowing that, um, I think what I'd like to do then is let's maybe pull the truck up to here. That should be good. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a truck station. We're going to flip it around. And yeah, it doesn't like the truck actually being there. <clears throat> so let's let's mark um, let's just mark that for a second and we can take that apart okay so we want the truck station to be right about here uh, no sorry right about here All right, let's um Nudge that over that way a little bit, and as long as it's more or less in the center, that's good enough. Again, this is temporary, so it doesn't have to be perfectly placed, just mostly perfectly placed. Very good. All right. Now, um, now what we want to do is we want to set up a manufacturer. So let's go to production and manufacturer. And we want, let's see, those are the inputs there. So we want it to be on this line here. Let, oh, 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 shit, hold on. Hit the wrong button at the wrong time. Okay, let's lock that there for a second. Okay, I'm going to nudge it. To about there. All right, and then we'll just run a line straight into there. We're going to set this to make modular engines, so it takes just these three inputs here. And we're also going to overclock it to the max just because we can. So it'll do two and a half per minute. All right, good. Now, we want to run um, some fuel over here. So let's put in a... Yeah, let's put in a line here. And I think I'm going to go just that height there. And then we'll run this back to here. Now we'll run this over to here. Honestly, my, my brain's just a little bit scrambled right now. From th That was a lot of work, you guys, trying to figure that factory out for the modular fr heavy modular frames. Um, it's just, again, kind of blows my mind how much shit is involved in just making two of those. <laughs> um, you'll see, you know, when, when we actually start putting it together, you'll see how crazy it is. Anyway, all right, let's see. We're, what we're going to do for our fuel is uh, let's see where's our here's our package fuel okay so we're gonna we're gonna just keep that up at the same height and then we're gonna run this kind of around the corner here so just go up two there we go So we'll just take it to here and go up to damage him. Him. 
Okay, so that'll supply the fuel, and again, that's just going to stay hooked up long enough until we're finished with this, and then we'll take it all back down again. And uh, there's no way we'll, we'll use all of that fuel up either, um, you know, before this is all said and done. We have to get 500 of those things down there, though, so it'll take a little while, but it's not going to take forever. Very good. All right, now uh, we'll worry about the truck later, setting up, resetting up the truck. What we're going to do next is we're going to run a line of uh, these guys in. Um, how much do you need per minute? I think it's... Well, actually, I don't remember, so we'll take a look. You need five per minute. Okay, everything can be Mark 1 here. I, we don't need anything more than Mark 1. Okay, so we'll come out to here. And is this going to give me a line? Probably not. I think it's too far. Okay, so we'll go back to, up to. And then we're going to want to put a lift in here and turn it this way. Can we get all the way there? Not quite. Okay, so we'll do a rough halfway point right about here. Let's just go on that seam there. I think everything's straight. Uh, no, it's not. I think this section is straight. So I think what we need to do is come back one here. There we go. That's what the doctor ordered. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to look at this for a little while, so I, I don't want it to be spaghetti. If it was like a 10-minute thing, I'd be fine with spaghetti, but it's going to be more like a, probably a three to five hour thing. All right. So that takes care of the heavy plating. Now, let's see. We need to also run uh, motors and rubber into here. Uh, sorry, the smart plating. Motors and rubber. Okay. Now, I think what I'll do with those is maybe try and run them right through here. And the reason for that is because we're going to set up a couple of the things on the other, you know, right over there. So I want to keep the belts for this on this side of the shed. It might just kind of nick the edge of this. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna nick the edge of it. But, jeez, I think I might just do it anyways, because, uh, yeah, temporary. We're gonna do it. I would, would not at all do this if it was a permanent setup, but it's temporary. So we're just going to do it. I know. I should be ashamed of myself, but I'm not. So fuck off. <laughs> uh, sorry. Anyway. So let's run this over to here. Does that give me a nice straight line? Yeah, it does, except for that it's going through the pole. In this. There we go. Okay. And then we'll run this down to here. Oh, it's not going to quite make it, is it? Okay. Well, let's get roughly halfway. And we'll put a couple more of these in. Okay. So let's get this line over here. Okay, now let's run, uh, let's see, we did the rubber, we need to do the motors. And those we're just going to 
We're going to raise those up. Like so. Run this around like so. I guess I could have used the wall mounts here, but that's alright. And that should work. Yep. Nice and straight. Okay, go back two, go up one, and we're good. There we go, we're straight. Okay, we got that part done. Uh, now we just need to run power to the manufacturer and we'll just run a line off of this uh, insulator there. Oh, for Pete's sake, really? You're gonna clip through there? You mother. All right, can we put take this to here and do that? And is that still gonna clip? It is, you son of a bitch. It's gonna be a pain in my ass, aren't you? All right, I'll just run this over to here then. There we go. All right, we are on our way towards making modular engines. Next thing we need to do is get our truck route set up start the route here I've got the fuel in my inventory from when I took it apart last time okay let's go ahead and press Q uh, start recording and here we go so the truck will come around here, make a nice smooth turn. Roll into here, load cargo. I think when you're recording like this, you don't need to actually wait for it, but I will anyway. All right. Okay, now this corner is okay I guess that wasn't too bad you just don't want to go too fast because it's very tight going through there now if you guys don't already know this some of you probably do when you record a route like this the vehicle or, or the I, I guess I should say the physics of the vehicle driving the route only apply when you know when you're in range of the vehicle like so when you're in the same chunk or whatever when you're not in the same chunk you're not look and you're not looking at it or whatever then it just kind of happens magically you know that the processor still you know does all the computations and the timing of it and the deliveries but it's not actually physically you know moving so it's kind of interesting so you know even if you see your vehicle you know maybe getting hung up on a corner for example which it is likely to do if you're looking at it um, if you're not looking at it then that doesn't matter the computer will just simulate it going around that corner and it you know it just all it does is just keep making the deliveries and in the timing you know that it uses and I don't think it pays attention to your speed either when you're recording. It may if you're looking at it, but not not when it's just doing its... Uh, oh, shit. We have a little bit of a problem here, folks. <laughs> um, all right. What we're going to do is hop out. That's going to create a pause marker there for the recording, but we can we can fix that later. Looks good. Okay. Let's hop back in and continue our recording. And like I said, I can just remove the pause node. 
Now this is really tight. In fact, you know what I was going to do? Okay, you know what? Let's create another pause node here that we can remove later. I'm going to actually extend... these foundations out here just to give it a little more room to turn. Let's use the let's use the two meters. You know one thing I think I'm gonna do when we do start over on 1-0, so I'm gonna probably use two meter foundations as my kind of default instead of the ones. I like the streamline look of the ones, but they do sometimes cause problems with vertical alignment with things. Uh, and I will actually show you an example of that when we put together our heavy modular frames factory. Okay, I guess it's just a little more room to turn. So the truck will come around this way. I need I need to take this out even more. Okay, I might be able to sort of fix this. There's just not a lot of room for this big ass truck over here. Unload. There we go. Okay, I'll meet you back at the other factory, uh, but I'm going to have to come back here and fix those, fix those notes. But I think we can do it without, you know, having to uh, re-record the whole thing. I should mention, too, that we would probably have been further ahead just to use a tractor for this size of this road. The only reason I'm using the truck is just to do it uh, just to you know say we hey we've used the truck <laughs> but I know it's not really the most practical thing um, we'll just use it this one time on this road and then in the future um, you know we'll build bigger roads for these trucks all right we are at the finish line here okay let's open the record menu um, we want to save this and we'll call this um, modular engine delivery. Okay, uh, I want to keep the nodes going, but we'll enable autopilot. And there it goes. Okay. I'm going to head back uh, to the other factory and fix a couple of those nodes real quick before before um, the truck gets down there. So I'll see you back down that way. Okay, so let's delete this pause node. And we'll delete this pause node. Okay. And then over here, um, I think what we, we can do is just remove that one, that one, and that one. Now, he may still have a little bit of trouble. Mr. Bean, where the hell did you come from? Okay, that's not going to help the situation. <laughs> um, he may have a little trouble while we're watching him, but he will, he'll have no trouble at all um, You know, when we're not here. The computer won't have any issues with that turn there. Okay, well, it looks, I guess he can go through Mr. Bean, so that's good. Hmm. He still did the backup, and I wonder if he's just doing that be because of his own built-in pathfinding and not... 
Yeah, he's kind of sc <laughs> scraping against the thing. We'll probably see him teleport here in a second. Usually when they get stuck like that, they, they just kind of teleport to get unstuck. Yeah, see, he just he just did. Okay, so here again, you know, if this was a permanent thing, I I would uh, I'd give it a lot more room. But uh, because it's just temporary, and because we're about ninety five percent of this, we're not going to be in the you know watching it do that anyways. It, it's not going to be an issue. Okay, we need to do one last thing here, and we need to jump back in for a second and turn off the nodes. Uh, no, jump back in for a second. Here we go. Um, oh shit. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> okay. Um, disable auto. Actually, you know what? I'll bet you it'll teleport. Let's hide the path nodes. That's what I was trying to do. Let's see if it'll teleport back up onto the road. I bet you it does. I think what it does is it, it tries to physically get back on track and if it can't do it after a certain number of seconds it just teleports did it just teleport it did <laughs> i don't know where to but it teleported um let's look at the map hmm so it went back to the loading station okay that's funny So yeah, it'll get stuck there for a second and it'll do its its teleport thingy. There it goes. Now it thinks it's unloading. If this was a permanent setup, what I would probably actually do is add more you know, room out here, just so I had a little bit more space to turn around. But after this, my plan is to no longer use trucks or tractors to deliver to the space elevator. We're going to set up a train station. That is the plan, anyway. Um, and we'll just use these inputs. So we'll have a, a train station platform out here. I'll probably run the rails out, at least to some extent, uh, across the water, which will look really cool, uh, you know, to come and make future deliveries down to our space elevator. Should be fun. Looks awesome coming into our, our factory here with our so far completed buildings. I really like the way our steel production factory came together. Looks good. Looks good indeed. And the shed doesn't look bad either. It's a little more basic, but you know, basic is also can also be beautiful if you do it right. If you look in the upper right hand corner, you can see that we currently have 28 modular engines already in the space elevator and the truck is delivering another load of 16 or so, I think. Um, and should be dropping those off soon. So it'll take a little while uh, for this to, to fill up. But once it's done, then we're good to go. And we'll, we'll tear all of this down and reconfigure for the adaptive control units, uh, which means we're going to we're going to start that process to end out this episode. Uh, if we take a look at the adaptive control unit, we can see that it takes heavy modular frames, which we, we're going to build the factory for that in the next episode or 10. <laughs> no, it won't take 10 episodes. Uh, we'll do that. I'm also planning on doing a permanent production line of computers because there's also a lot of things coming up uh, that use computers. So I think we'll make that a permanent production line. Um, we're definitely not going to do automated wiring because I think this is the only other time we need it. So we'll just do that in a, in, in a, um, a temporary setup. And I haven't decided yet at this point if I need a permanent production line for circuit boards. For the adaptive control units anyways, I think we're just going to also 
um, t set up a temporary thing and just use our storage to make to create those. And then I'll decide if I think I need these as a permanent, you know, j down the road, just depending upon what else needs it. I We probably will, but I just don't know that for sure yet. You guys feel free to tell me in the comments, too, if you say you absolutely need to make a permanent production line of circuit boards, then, you know, then I'll do it. You know, let me know for sure. I kind of have a hunch that that's probably what's going to happen. But I'm in a little bit of a hurry, a self-imposed hurry to complete phase three, only because I want to get to the hover jetpack or whatever the hell the thing is that lets us hover, um, because that's just going to be a game changer, you know, for being able to, to do these larger builds and things. Um, yeah. All right. So let's let's go ahead and get this little temporary setup going. Uh, we're going to need two assemblers. And we're just going to pop them down right along here. Um, let's put one lined up with that seam and one lined up with this seam. Excellent. Okay, this guy is going to make our automated wiring. And I believe, here, let's... Let's just temporarily, uh, just to look at it, let's put another manufacturer down here. This isn't going to stay here. Um, but uh, we're going to need seven and a half automated wiring per minute. We need to make 100 of these, so we need to make 750 uh, automated wiring. No, wait a second. That's not right. We need uh, 1,500. Yeah, because it takes 15 of these to make one adaptive control unit. That's just the, that's just the flow rate. So we need to make a hundred and uh, no, we need to make fifteen hundred automated wiring for this. Okay, uh, so what we're gonna do is I got these turned around bass backwards, don't I? All right, so we'll, so this will be our automated wiring, and we just need to run stators and cable into here, and then this one's gonna make circuit boards for us. Again, we're gonna do a permanent, uh, uh, sorry, a a, a, a temporary production of these for the adaptive control units and then later on if I need to I'll make them permanent okay let's um put in some lifts here I don't know if I'll actually use both of those but we'll we'll just see um 50 per minute 50, yeah, everything could be Mark 1 here. Maybe pull it back to... That's good enough. Line it up there. Alright, so you need... Uh, stators and cables. Stators are... Right here. That'll come up to there. Okay, good. So you will make it all the all the way down here. These things are going to be on the road, but again, temporary, so not too worried about it. I think I will make this also a stackable pull. Maybe what we'll do for this one is we'll we'll come off of here and just let it drop down. Oh, except for I actually need to go two this way. Uh, let's just bring it up. All right. And then we're going to need a halfway point. That looks good to there. Looks good to there. Back to. And just ramp that down into there. Okay, good. So I'll get our automated wiring going. And again, we're going to need to make 1,500 of those. So I'll, I'll just keep keep my eye on it. And, you know, once it 
gets to 1500 then we'll stop it if we go a little bit over we can just throw the rest in the sink so not a big deal uh, we did need to get some power out here too um i don't actually have any power on this wall oh by the way i did you know um we will have to continue expanding our storage obviously in the future um and so i i actually blueprinted uh these two sections of walls so that way we just you know can very easily expand it in the future just FYI, here's power right here. So let's um, let's put another one of these here. I know it it clips a little bit, but sometimes you just can't do anything about that. So you have to assume that there's conduit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to do about it, right? All right, we'll put this right about in the middle there, and power those guys on okay good now you should be ready to start uh making automated wiring as soon as you get the cable that you need it's a beautiful thing oh and as usual since this is temporary let's overclock the shit out of it get it done fast 6.25 per minute do i have at least three more power shards i do i have exactly three more power shards I've got a lot more too. I'm just talking about what I have on me at the moment. Um, yeah, let's also overclock this so we'll produce 18 and three quarters per minute. What I might do for plastic, since it's closer, is let's just run that one along the ground. Uh, plastic, plastic, plastic. To here, we'll see if that, how well that actually, yeah, that'll go underneath this belt. Okay, so we're good. Um, and we can... Ooh, it just, it just works. Just barely. Sometimes things just come together. Most of the time they don't, though. <laughs> Most of the time nothing's ever easy, but every once in a while things work out. Okay. Um, is that straight? Yes, it is. Copper sheeting is the last thing we want. I think we'll run that on a uh, higher connection, uh, which means then that we want this to go up, I think, one. Let's check that now. So let's see, that's one, two, three. One, two, three. No, it needs to come up, I think, two clicks. One, two, three. Uh, no, f four clicks. Yeah. That's right. Okay. This, however, um, needs to be moved to here. I wasn't actually doing it for that reason, but after I looked at it, I realized that we do need to do it that way. And we'll just kind of run these back reverse. Uh, oh. Wait a second. Are we good? Okay, it looks like we're level and straight. It's plumb, baby. It's plumb. Now, let's see. We're going for copper sheeting, which is right there. So we should be able to... Uh, use actually probably that one maybe actually let's see will we get all the way down there yes it will all right so this guy has a total of four marker well one big marker and four of the white dots showing just so we know what the height is just like that um, nope, that doesn't clip. It's close, but it doesn't. So we're good. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to run this to here, and then back two, and up three. Okay, are we straight? 
straight, level, all that good stuff. I think we are. Fantastic. Okay. That's it. So, what we will do, of course, is we will just accumulate all the product that we need uh, in these two bins, and they will become two of the four inputs that we'll need for the adaptive control units. The other two inputs will be our heavy modular frames and our computers, uh, both of which we will make a permanent production line for first since we need them for other things too. So we may as well just do that now. And I've already got the blueprints and the general design for this one done. Um, it's just going to be a matter of putting it together and that's going to be a huge undertaking in and of itself. And that doesn't even count any cosmetics, which we will also work on too at some point. Okay, yeah, guys, let me know in the comments. Um, do I need a permanent circuit board production line too? Um, those of you who know the answer to that question, and if I do, then I'll make it. If you don't think I do, then, you know, we won't. <laughs> um, especially, here's the other thing too, just, just to kind of let you guys know what's in my mind. Um, we have, uh, let's see, we need, we're going to need a thousand of these, by the way, 1,500 of these, 1,000 of those. Um, we have, you know, now that we know, I'm almost positive that I'm going to start over when Uno drops. That sort of kind of affects a little bit how we're going to do things moving forward. We are going to still progress in the game, but I might be more inclined, <clears throat> excuse me, just to try and get to the end of the game without, uh, you know, keeping things a little more streamlined, knowing that we are going to start over than I would if I knew this was going to be a permanent save for many, many months to come. What that actually means, I'm not really sure, um, other than just to say that, um, you know, it, it does change the landscape a little bit in terms of how we're going to progress and, and that sort of thing. Um, for example, I may make just one heavy modular frame factory instead of 10. If we made 10, we'd have a skyscraper way the hell up in the sky, which would be fun for a permanent installation, but because we know this one's not going to be permanent, um, you know, again, it just kind of changes things a little bit. All right, guys, future OG coming back at you here. Um, after I finished the episode, this was just bugging the hell out of me, so I moved it over, <laughs> and I also I also changed up um, a couple other things, too. I, I'm, I'm actually running the product uh, for the automated wiring and the circuit boards into... You know through the wall there and storing them in these two bins here so that way you know when the time comes to hook up our next production um everything will be nice and neat moved over far enough that way so we can run stuff through here without clipping and uh yeah so we're just doing that i haven't actually connected that belt up there yet because i want to wait until we're finished you know with the smart plating first uh, before we do that so anyway i just wanted to let those of you who are as anal retentive about these things as i am know that yep i i, I couldn't live with that so i had to fix it <laughs> all right thanks bye okay anyway all that being said i think we're finished with this episode i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and if you did please hit that like button subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and we'll catch you all in the next one Bye bye